Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Retro Recall of the PS1 Chronicles, a show where we play and rank every PlayStation game ever created. My name is Jimmy, and as always, I'm here with Mike. Hello. All right, so what is your opinion on hard video games? Because you know I love them. I think that hard video games fall into two categories, at least for me. You have the hard, and then you have the rage games. So which one do you mean in that question? (laughs) Well, the game we're playing today, I wouldn't call a rage game, right? I actually kind of do. I said it was hard, but it has subtle hints of like rage-esque qualities to it. Not full-blown rage game, but it does have its qualities here and there. Okay, well, we'll get into that later. But as as far as like a rage game, I mean, like, can you give me an example of like what you mean? (sighs) For me, and I, I know this probably isn't going to be right, but for me, I think Super Meat Boy qualifies as a rage game. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But it's also just a hard platformer in general. But I think it's because of that difficulty that makes it the rage game. You have Trials HD, which I would qualify as another rage game. I actually love the Trials games. They're very fun. Oh, me too. Both of those games I just said, I love completely. It's, I'm not against rage games. But then when you get into games like I Want to Be the Guy. I had that when I was like way younger. And uh, I played it for about five minutes. <laughs> so games like that where it's like intentionally we're just going to mess with you the entire time and there's really no skill there. You just, well, I guess there is eventually, but... I mean, it's memorization. Pretty much, yeah. So games like, I do love them, but then if you go to the hard route, I would say Dark Souls, anything from from software. I never played them because they're too intimidating to me. It just seems way too hard. But I feel like I would enjoy it if I got it down because it's just a, another thing of learning and progressing. But yeah, in general, I do like hard games and rage games from here and there. I've never really thought of it split up like that, but I don't really care for rage games too much. Like Trials, yes. Super Meat Boy, I kind of like. Like I, I played it for sure, but like I don't consider that a game that I love. Obviously, I love the other kind of hard you know, and that can go to platformers that can go to like a Metroidvania or like any of that stuff where it's like really intense and you have to be like very deliberate with what you're doing. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where every movement you do counts and you there's repercussions for doing the wrong thing. Yeah, as far as like Souls goes, like I know that they have the reputation of being very hard and like, you know, they've leaned into it for sure. But I just think that once you get down one of them, right, it's really easy. And your first one is the hardest, but then the rest, it's just natural to you. Right. And that's the way I always thought of it, too. It's, And that just goes with anything you do. If you try to learn coding, that's difficult in the beginning. But once you get it down, it's easy from there. And I feel like Dark Souls is that same thing. You need to learn the patterns and the movements and you're good from there. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. I played the original Dark Souls three times before I actually like got it to click for me. Because I always liked the idea of it, but like whenever I played it the first time, I just hit a wall and I'm like, I don't understand this. Yeah. And I think early on, I saw videos on Reddit and whatnot of like these people getting completely screwed over in their game of Dark Souls. And I'm like, why would you want to put yourself through this type of torture trying to learn it? Since then, I've grown to be like, I can understand wanting to get through it. But I think, and this just popped in my head as you were speaking about that Mario Kart, I would put up there as like a huge rage game. Yeah, but I wouldn't call that a hard game though. Not hard, but if we're talking like rage category, it's like that's putting yourself through torture just for no reason. (laughs) Yeah, well, if you want to get into rage games, there's also, you know, like uh, like Overcooked and like games, uh, I'm trying to think of an example, like uh, Getting Over It, with with the pickaxe, like stuff oh, like that, it's like yeah. intentionally shitty to make you like rage. I remember when getting over it came out, you were over and we were gonna film an episode, and we spent what two hours playing that game trying to see how far we can even make it. Yeah, I actually got it on my phone at that point too, and it, it's fun for a little bit, but then like, you know, you lose one time, and then you quit. Yeah, pretty much. Hence the rage game, you know. I'm trying to think of like other hard games. But I, like nothing's coming to mind. I can't really think of what would I, what what other thing like obviously buying of Isaac is hard at times. Yeah, um, I mean you can get into the world of like platformers and stuff like that, like uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Those are all really hard. I never heard of that one. Um, that's like an older 
like Super Nintendo, I think even NES game that's still going as a series now. Mega Man is very hard. Oh, yeah. That is a very hard game. So, I mean, like, you can separate into different kind of genres, but the most experience I have, obviously, is with Souls and with, like, Souls-inspired Metroidvanias like Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is very hard as well. I'm saving that one. I have it, and I really want to play it, but I just want to find the time to put all my effort into that game because I've been wanting to play that for so many years. It's an amazing game. That's all I hear, ever. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I... I just think playing a hard game, it very much gives you that I did it, I beat it, that sense of satisfaction that you don't get anywhere else. And with Souls specifically, I would say the reason I like it a lot is, and it's funny to say this is the reason why I would like it, but when you're playing it, especially for the first time, like once you learn the areas and stuff, it doesn't have this, but exploring an area for the first time in a Souls game just gives you a level of anxiety and a level of stress that I've never felt in any other game ever. <laughs> it is like draining. For example, the other day I was playing Lies of P. Still playing that, not that much farther, but I'm liking it. Um, you know, I'm finishing an area and I'm slowly working my way through it. I'm almost out of uh, like potions and you finally get a shortcut back to the, like the bonfire thing in that game, right? And that sense of relief and like a lot of the time, whenever I reach a point like that, I'm like, okay, I'm done for the day. I can't take this anymore. No, oh, that makes a lot of sense. I know specifically I've seen some Dark Souls playthrough, I think, where you're walking through a forest with like invisible creatures, if that makes sense. Or if that rings a bell. Not off the top of my head, but... uh, Or I could be thinking of a completely different game, but just seeing that, I'm like, I would be so stressed going through that forest trying to avoid all these invisible things. There's so many moments like that in all those games. It's it's impossible to even... <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that answers the question of... I was going to ask, would you naturally gravitate towards just very difficult games like that? But I think we're both on the same page of, yeah, we would. Yeah, I mean, I like a challenging game as long as it's not hard in an unfair or mean way. That's the biggest thing. And I think that's what qualifies it between hard and rage game is how fair slash unfair is it deliberately. Yeah, I think what the bottom line of it is for me is like a rage game is fun when it's self-aware and it's funny and it's lighthearted, you know, like a Trials or Super Meat Boy even. But when you get into it taking itself seriously and still being that hard, then I'm out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. Now that we got all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this game. The Adventure of Little Ralph was released on June 3rd, 1999, only in Japan. It was developed and published by New Corporation, which I'm not familiar with. This game is an action platformer. It's very straightforward, and it's always funny whenever I just see the title of the game before we play it. I always think in my head, what is this game going to be about? And when I got into this game, I was shocked to see that this is what the game is. Because I always have a vision in my head of, oh, this is what the game might be like. Jumping into it, and because you said, oh, it's only in Jap Japan that it was released, uh, we couldn't read anything that was happening on the screen. So how I found this game was, you know, we played a 3D platformer first with Crash Bandicoot. So I was kind of looking for something, you know, like a 2D platformer, maybe like not just a straight up 2D platformer, because there is a ton of those. Like there's so many mascot platformers on the PlayStation and everything. So I was trying to find something unique. And this game just kept coming up everywhere on Reddit. And everywhere, it said, you don't need to know Japanese to play this game. And I think they were right. I mean, you don't know the story really, but do you really need to? You don't... Well, I wouldn't even say that. You get the story because they show you that animation in the beginning. And you just through visuals, you get what's happening. You just don't get the dialogue to go with it. That's true. And whenever you come up to a boss, especially, they have this back and forth dialogue. Obviously... Don't know what they're saying, but I don't think that really pertains to the story as much. Especially in these types of games, that type of thing is just witty dialogue back and forth. Yeah. The story of the game is this evil thing took your girlfriend and turned you into a child. It's like a silver guy and he has these little minion things and other creatures behind him. That's enough of a setup. That's really all you need. I mean, it's like Mario or something, right? <laughs> Pretty much. That's exactly what it is. 
This is also one of those games which I learned really quickly that you can't trust anything you see. I think I died instantly because I thought something was a background thing and it just killed me. I want to say it was the first bird you get to. And I thought it was just a bird there and he killed me. So Yeah, I mean, that's definitely happened to me throughout playing this. You just swing your sword at everything you see. Yeah, and if something is there, it's probably there for a reason. There is no, this is a background object type thing. It's just everything you see in front of you is a thing that can probably kill you or you need to interact with. Which is good. I like that there's no gray line. I agree. They present everything. Yeah, I mean, so this game is just a pretty standard 2D platformer. You know, it. whenever you think of that, like any game in this style, that's what this looks like. You know, you have a sword. You can jump. You don't really get any new abilities aside from a few little things here and there, but those are all temporary. So really, this game is about precision and just working your way through each stage. The style of it was very reminiscent of the old side-scrolling games like uh, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Tur- Turtles game, if you've ever played that, or I think Streets of Rage was like that too, where you, you could do multiplayer and you just keep progressing to the next screen to fight enemies. They were more beat-em-ups, but the way the graphics were just instantly brought me back to that moment of like those games. The art style of that era of games, I just think... It's instantly recognizable and it's just, I just love it. And I think this game is beautiful. I really do. It is. The only downside I have about it is his running animation. I'm not the biggest fan of that, but I think that's the only downside. It's very like anime-esque in a way. Just like the way that it's like, it's like kind of stiff and you see his like hair bouncing around. (laughs) Yeah, it's just, that's the best way. It's very stiff. I, and I don't know if that was intentional or it's just if that was an easiest the easiest run cycle they could animate, and that's why they chose it. That that didn't really stand out to me, but I did think the backgrounds, and I mean pretty much everything just looks great. Yeah, I just playing through every level, I can't pick out anything that looked bad. I also think there's a good amount of like variation between the levels too. Like when you get to like the desert level and stuff, and it starts to change, and it just it looks cool. Yeah, yeah. Also, I don't know if we should get into this now, of each difficulty has a different set amount of levels. So before we even go that far, how long did you play this and how far did you get? (laughs) So uh, I played about two hours, 45 minutes, almost three hours. Uh, I got all the way through the easy levels uh, and I started normal and I didn't get very far in normal just because I stopped. Um, I played a little over four hours And I beat easy and I got to 8-3 on normal. Oh, okay. Are those the only two difficulties? Is easy and normal or is there a hard? I think normal is hard. Oh, okay. I thought maybe there was one more above that. So, Yeah, so just a heads up, you know, I pushed this podcast back about a half an hour so that I could try and beat it. (laughs) Yeah. And I gave up because... And we'll get into this a little later, but the ending is just some of the most brutal shit I've ever played. I'm really curious to see this on your capture. Um, I looked it up because I wanted to see how close I was because I'm like, I just need to power through this. And I was so close. Oh, really? Less than 10 minutes away. <laughs> and you just couldn't like break through? You know what? I'll just say this now. Let's just, let's just do it. Um, so the final level, level eight, is just straight up rage-inducing mean shit the whole time. Oh. And like, it gets so hard. So I didn't use save states at all. And at this point, I'm like, I just need to beat this. Save states didn't help me at all. (laughs) So is it just rageful because of the amount of enemies they throw at you? So it is mostly really, really hard platforming challenges with enemies and with traps and with everything. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm excited to see this on your footage now. No, you're not. (laughs) The one thing I'll say, you know, I don't want to get too deep into this, but the continues and the save spots in the game are very, very forgiving and generous, which makes it not that bad. Yeah, uh, that's a big thing for me is just the unlimited continues. Very nice. I love that when games do that where, yeah, you lost all your lives, but... You can just keep going from this one spot. Well, so like on the last level, there's basically 
numbered rooms that the number goes down as you're getting closer to the final boss. And each room, after you do continue, will start you right there. So like, it is brutally difficult, each room is, but it will never make you do it again once you beat it. So I found that to be very fair and they knew how hard it was and they're not going to make you keep doing it. So props for that. There was definitely times I felt where I was trying to do something and I failed and I died and I would just kill myself instantly in that spot to restart in that spot because I didn't move very far in the continue. And I kind of wanted to save up all my lives leading into a boss fight. So if I lost one life, I'm like, oh, I'm killing myself two more times and then I'll just restart from the continue because I want to go into this fight with as much stuff as I can. I did that the entire time. So you'll see me just jumping off the edge. Yeah. I didn't really have to do that too much on the easy mode, but definitely on normal. So, okay, you played both uh, difficulties more. From what I experienced on the normal difficulty and the little bit I've played, it's felt exactly the same as easy. So what changes aside from the new levels? Well, you die in one hit instead of two. Oh, even with a shield. No, not with it. The shield is the only way to get an extra hit. Oh, then that's not different from easy then. You start with a shield on easy though. You don't on normal. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have to, you have to find the shield on normal. But on easy, you still die in one hit if you don't have the shield. Yes, but on normal, it's very like rare that you'll find a shield. It's usually in like a, a place that's off the beaten path or you know they like to do this too where they put an item in a spot where they know that you're going to die if you go for it. Ah. Uh. That you just brought up one of my points. I hated the game for that. There's so many times it's like, oh, hey, it's like shining something in front of your face. Like, hey, you know you want this. And you, you there's really no way to do it without dying. At least from what I could find on all my examples. Yeah, same for me. But yeah, and there's also parts throughout it that I noticed were harder. Like the one that really made me realize it was there's this one level where you're jumping on these platforms that are kind of going up and like moving like this and you have to jump while you're on the moving platform to avoid fires. I don't know if that rings a bell for you. Oh, 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 yeah. There's like one single fireball and you got to like jump over it. Yes, but when you're playing that part on normal, there's a bunch of fires everywhere. Oh, okay. Well, I'm at least glad that they provided more than just a few more levels. And the extra levels do introduce a lot of new enemies, straight up new mechanics, new things, just like all kinds of stuff. That is, that's a good thing then. Um because I just thought it was three more levels. I don't think we said this. Easy only has five levels. Normal has eight. The later levels aren't really as long. At least the first, like se seven, no, six and seven are not as long as like a normal level. But eight felt way longer than any level in the game. I don't know if that's just because I was like beating my head against the wall constantly. It did feel like, sure, some of the levels were just relentless, even on easy. But I feel like they made the length of the levels not too bad, where it's like we understand what we're doing, so it's going to be a little bit shorter, so you don't have to, so you don't give up. Like it's a way to keep you playing, but also make you mad at the same time. Yeah, I felt the length of the game was really good. I really like each level felt good. You know, when it was over, it made sense. I don't really have a favorite, but I do have a few sections that I didn't really like, which I'm sure you might agree with. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, what, what are these sections? So how did you enjoy the minecart part? <sighs> I, yeah, I have this in my notes. The minecart part, one, I hate <laughs> how they let you run out of the minecart. Yeah, I know. I, it should be one of those things where you're stuck in, you can't run side to side, and when you jump out, you can jump, do like a diagonal jump up out into the next thing. The amount of times I died because I landed on a cart and ran off accidentally... I, I can't even tell you how many times that was. I spent more time on that part than any other level in the game besides the last one. There is one section of that where your minecart gets shot up in the air and another minecart comes flying over your head to go in front of you. The first time I'm like, cool. And I try to jump and I missed it. And then after I missed it, I realized, oh, they land on a track again. So I can jump on the minecart at that point. Did that the next time. Then you're back in the air again, and now there's another one that comes up behind you. And I'm like, I'm going to wait until we land to jump on that. Nope. It's like the game is constantly like, here you go. You got it. You figured it out. Never mind. We're going to screw you one more time because... <laughs> the part that kept messing me up the most was the part where the fireballs start, start coming and they hit the track and it just slightly bumps it up and you have to do a quick jump up. <laughs> yeah. 
that was <laughs> the mine whole minecart part as a whole was the first time I almost used safe states and I was about to and then I beat it and I'm like, okay, all right. But that goes back to what we were saying of yeah, it's annoying, it's difficult, but each time you're like, okay, now I know at this part I need to do this. If you screw up from that point or you mess up your jumps, that's just on you kind of at that point, not aiming correctly. Yeah, and also the game kind of counts on you becoming like impatient and just trying to quickly go through a level even though you've already been through it. That was my whole experience was being too impatient, especially on that level and dying a lot. The other one that got me pretty bad was the the ice level where the ice is going down like a like a hill. Mhm. Yeah, it's kind of like one of those ride along levels where you don't have to do anything. The platform you're on is moving. And there's just enemies that come at you. I also spent a very good amount of time on that. But what's interesting is, so my first playthrough on easy took a little over two hours, I would say. But when I went back on normal, I beat the whole easy mode level, like all of the levels from easy mode in about an hour. Oh, okay. You know, like once you beat it once, you know. So like, even the minecart, even the ice part, I beat them pretty quick just because I knew what to expect. And that's the whole thing. Because at the very bottom of the ice uh, hill level, one of the more annoying things is how they have those ropes at the very end. You don't know they're coming up. So you die because you don't jump on the rope right away and you go down the cliff. So yeah, I get it. Once you beat through the entire game, you now know all the gotchas. So you're ready for them every single time. Yeah, and I just... I really like this game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said to me. You were hyping it up a lot, so I was like, I don't know what I'm getting into on this. I feel like I'm very indifferent on it. I think I had fun, and I think I would continue to go back through, but I also don't think I had the fun at the same time. It was a, a weird balance in my head of liking it and not liking it at the same time. One thing I really wanted to get your thoughts on was the fighting game bosses. Yeah, so... I, I kind of wanted to go through each of the bosses individually. Okay, we can do that. So your very first boss, which actually I should lead into this a different way. Whenever I started playing this, my first reference to this game is Sonic. And I felt like this is Sonic, but you have a sword instead of rolling and spinning into people. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but you can continue. Just because the music has a very Sonic feel to it with how upbeat it is. Okay, I guess. Uh, the way you're just running sideways and it's same with Mario. You have the enemies coming in from the right and you got to jump on them or hit them or like with the Sonic spin, you can also hold your attack and hit an enemy to make them spin and hit other enemies. Yeah, certain enemies you have to do that too. So I'm not saying there's a direct parallel to that. It's just, it had a feeling to that to me and that came to fruition fully on the very first boss because it very much felt like a doc- Dr. Robotnik style fight. From Sonic. You're right. Which I loved. I'm not complaining about this at all. Whenever I saw that and I saw the contraption and a guy in a, a thing to control the contraption, I'm like, this is Sonic. This is amazing. I love this. <laughs> also, we got to talk about the overpowered uh, downward sword attack. Yeah, which is more like... The only time I've ever seen that was in Shovel Knight. I don't know if it's a common thing. I don't know, but pretty much any game that has a sword like this, you can do that. And... In this game, it pretty much one-shots every enemy. It does. I know there's those giant... I think they were like abominable snowmen in one of the snow levels. And it took like three hits normally, or you could just do the down spike and you got them in one hit. So the, the first boss I thought was really fun. Yes. I don't really have anything to say. I just wanted to say that like that to me set the tone, whereas like this is going to be just a fun time because it really wasn't too hard and it was really easy to figure out what to do. And even when the things started popping down from the top to try and get you like not paying attention, it was still just, you know, a pretty standard boss. But it, to me, showed that the bosses in this game aren't going to be too mean. To a certain point, I would agree with you on that. <laughs> All right, well, then let's keep going. Second boss. Uh, is Vampire Kid. What would you call him? Yeah, no, I agree. And he really doesn't, he just swoops around and then he has the electric tail that he tries to like stab you with. So I cheesed him both times when I fought him. So I got him stuck in like the top right. What I would do is you climb up the rope and like if the rope is here, he's like in the wall waiting to come and get you. But I would just keep attacking him so he's just like stuck there. Can't move. Oh, 
That's nice. I, I did have a little bit of, this is where it started to get a little bit difficult to, with him because it's just really hard for me to predict his movements. And whenever I try to defend an attack from him, either I didn't push attack fast enough or I would do a jump attack, but the attack wouldn't swing when I jumped and I would just bump into him and die. Yeah, I had a harder time the second time you fight him just because I couldn't cheese him. And it's also like, felt like his attacks were a little faster. They were, and the ice thing didn't help at all. Which, yeah, we can skip to that because he's the first stage boss on the fifth level again. And actually, it's funny you say that because I was able to cheese him a little bit on the second time. The way I did it was I just found this one spot on the map where he would do that dive attack down to do like this horizontal punch fly thing. So I'd stand there, hit him twice, and he'd go back up and it'd reset him to do the same exact thing. So I guess it's just because of where I was standing. He just it was triggering him to do the same thing over and over again. Uh, it didn't last for very long. I think it finally switched out to a different attack, but it, it allowed me to get more hits in than I would have. I would always get got by him whenever he would switch to either like the lightning tail or the fire attack. I felt like the fire attack was the easier of the three uh, stages. The lightning one, I had so much trouble with. It's just like you're getting in a rhythm, then you like stop paying attention for a second, and then he gets you, you know. Yeah. Uh, the third boss is the Sphinx. What did you think about that one? I thought it was really easy. It was. What was your method to doing it? Well, I would jump down first and destroy the thing at the bottom that spawns like the bugs. And then uh, I would just... Because you get that fire attack with your sword for that one. So I would really just stand in the first area, like the first block, keep shooting it at him. Then when he would do the attack that would get me there, I'd move back one, do the same thing, just keep alternating until he died. Oh, okay. I did about the same thing where once the fight started, I dropped down immediately to take out the thing so no bugs could spawn. And then whenever those two front blocks do their cycle in an oval, I waited for the first block to go and then waited for the second block, jump on that. And by the time you got up to the face, the fire was done shooting. So I jump up and do three hits on the face and land back on the bottom. What was nice about that is the lasers never got you and the homing missiles never got you. So you just waited down there and kept getting hits in. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really have too much trouble with it. Any any time I would lose on that boss was just like me being impatient to get another hit. Yeah, same. Uh, but then we get to the Lizard Man fight. And uh, this is where things get very interesting with boss fights. <laughs> yeah, so Ralph turns back into an adult. And this turns into a 1v1 fighting game. Pretty much like a Street Fighter. Yeah. Which sounds insane that this is a thing in this game, but... The first time, like it happened, like he turns into a man. I'm like, cool. See health bars come up. I'm like, were they always there for boss fights? And I never saw them. And then I, I kind of liked it, honestly, because it wasn't super hard. It wasn't hard. And it's a very unique thing to, to do. I was, you did these three other boss fights and it's pretty much the same style. And now we're going to switch it up on you. And now you're going to do a Street Fighter thing. It's, I don't think it's, corny at all and I think it's pretty cool yeah I uh, I looked it up and I guess there are combos and stuff you can do too oh did you happen to do any special ones I definitely did some like grab attacks which I don't know how I did and I also did like a fire attack one time or two times and like I don't know I was trying to recreate it but I couldn't yeah I, I the a third one I did was an, a lightning attack and again don't know how I did it but I did it at some point but it, yeah the grabbing and the fire were the two I consistently kept doing. But I, I couldn't tell you what the button combos were. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure in the manual they tell you something, right? <laughs> yeah, did you look at the manual at all? No, I didn't because I knew I wouldn't be able to read it. I was hoping for something like the Chocobo game where there's pictures with buttons and showing you what it does. But finally, you're on stage five and then you can take it on after here where you fight the vampire kid again. We talked about that. The only difference is now he can shoot ice blocks at you and maybe capture you in ice. And then he has a fire stage. That's it. Uh, the second stage of the level five, you get, I want to say crystal statues is what you're fighting, which I don't know about you. I got through that in like five seconds. Yeah, I didn't think it was bad at all. My technique on that was to jump, do the down spike, get three hits in on him, do another jump down spike to push him back. It kept delaying his attack and he was dead. It, there was nothing to that fight. And then the last part of the stage five, you get the silver guy, which is the guy who steals your girlfriend in the beginning. And you, it's another street fight, fighter style boss fight. Yeah, I mean, so the next boss is you fight this like dragon 
It's like a dragon made of like machinery. And it's pretty straightforward. I didn't have too much trouble with it. Um, he kind of just like flies around and you have to like hit parts of him and dodge attacks while you're doing it. The cool thing is, is like, let's say you jump on him and do a downward attack. He doesn't do damage to you if you bounce on him. You just bounce off. Oh, okay. So it really wasn't too bad. And I didn't really have, I beat it in a couple tries and that was pretty much it. Like, I don't even remember what the next boss was. And that's why I'm looking it up in my footage right now. <laughs> I want to say it was just another fighting game one. All my footage is of me playing this fucking last level. Um, yeah, so the, the next boss for stage seven is just this like fairy lady that you fight in another Street Fighter level. And again, it's she was a little tougher because she was a little more aggressive. But at the same time, I still beat it pretty quick. And then you never made it to the third or the final boss. No, but I do know the final boss is another fighting game boss. Oh, okay. Which is, I mean, I, cool, I guess, but the fact that they keep reusing that system, I would have liked to see something more unique. Yeah, I was kind of hoping they would kind of throw something else at the wall there, just because like they have shown that they're willing to mix it up. Yeah, it's, hey, we're mixing it up, and then they just stop doing that, and they keep repeating what they already did. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the fighting stuff, but at the same time, it just feels a little just like, underbaked in a way exactly it's just each, each as you said each uh time you get into one of those modes it just gets a little bit harder than the previous one uh i know with the lizard man guy or no the actually the silver guy the final boss on the fifth on the easy i won with just a sliver of health left because again he was just more aggressive i beat pretty much all of them like at the last second like that i honestly couldn't remember the first one <laughs> So that is probably true for me as well. Well, I just feel like the first one, it's kind of like anything where like the first one of those you do is the hardest and it took me a while to beat it. But then when the other ones came up, I was like, I know the tricks here. So like I beat them pretty quick. Yeah. There's a lot too with this game of me not understanding what it did right away. Probably the same thing for you. Yeah. First off, you have these icons that are of your face and then you have hearts. But yet... My guy kept dying in one hit and then sometimes two hits. And I'm like, what is going on? I have like three hearts. How am I dying in one hit? I don't understand the system at all. Did it take you a long time to figure that out? I figured it out once I got an extra life from it. Yeah, exactly the same. Once I, you fill up your heart thing, you get an extra life and that's it. I feel like it's so confusing to have it as a heart. Yeah. Do you get anything for having lots of points? No. I think it's just like every other game we played, like Einhander and all that stuff, is just points or points to get a high score. Yeah, because there's like a lot of things around the level that give you points, especially in like hidden areas. And like, I think that's really just to get a high score at the end of the game. It's just bragging rights whenever you play with friends or something and you can show how high of a score you got. Which, and that's where my normal gameplay was. I didn't play very much, but when I did, what I was doing was specifically exploring on normal difficulty. Like all the things I kind of missed because I was actually playing the game on easy. I wanted to go check it out and see what what are they hiding? Because this game is really good at giving you alternative paths and different ways to go about it and hidden objects everywhere. Yeah, I didn't explore as much as I would have liked to, but it's just because, you know, once you just find points, it's like, what's the point of exploring anymore, right? True. I felt like anytime I saw a really good thing, like a sword or like a shield, it would always be a trap. Oh, do you have any examples of that? Because I don't know if I've ever... I mean, like, so obviously there's the ones that are in a, like a normal place where you're supposed to get it, you know, like a shield or a sword. But like there would be one, there was one I found today where I did a whole platforming thing and up in the corner over here, I see a sword. And I'm like, okay, can I get that without dying? No. They also do that I think it's in the second stage or second level where there's specific objects up on high platforms and there's no clear way of how to get up to that high platform. There's a lot of spots like that. And I'm just like, so are you supposed to like find a path later and then come back through there or something? I don't know. I never really like went far enough to find it. Yeah. There has to be a, a separate path somewhere that we didn't see or we didn't know how to get to immediately. And that would take you to the spots that we're seeing before. It's, it's the only thing that makes sense because as far as I'm aware, there's no extra abilities like a double jump. No, but I do think it's cool that these levels are so dense that like if you wanted to keep playing this, there's so many things you could find to make it easier on you. Yeah. 
The first one I noticed was in the very first level, when you're walking up that one tower, and then on the outside of the tower, you see a ladder going up to the side. I don't think I saw that. Okay. It's, it's, it could easily look like decoration, but I kept seeing that ladder and I'm like, that has to be there for a reason. This game doesn't just put something there just for decoration. Things are there for a reason. So my normal gameplay, I made it my mission to get to that ladder, which was a pain in the ass to get there because of how much you have to dodge and all these enemies coming at you to even get there. Finally get there, climb all the way up to the ladder, and you get one of those uh, furry creature things. Yeah, they kind of just like shoot a little like fireball for you. Yeah. It's just like a pet that follows you and whenever you attack with your sword, he'll attack and throw something out at the enemy. And you lose them when you die. (sighs) I was so frustrated every time I died because you just lose everything. Yeah. Especially going into a boss fight with your fire sword and not having that fire sword anymore going into the boss fight. I hear you. I don't think I ever did a boss and beat it with like a power up like that other than the, the Sphinx, which they give it to you. Yeah, that and... I want to say the first vampire kid fight, you could actually go backwards to pick up the fire sword again and then come back, but you have a risk of falling off the platform and dying in the water. So I will say the platforming is pretty tough in this game, but it never feels unfair, really. No, it's never unfair. Very precise. Yes, but there are times, especially on that one I was talking about, you have those platforms that drop off underneath you whenever you land on them and water underneath you. So if you mess up once, you're dead. And that one specifically, there's one specific platform where my jump wouldn't work on the first try. Every single time I tried to jump and he would like stick to the platform and then I'd fall and die. And I don't understand why or what was happening. I had a lot of trouble with those because like, I want to say level seven, there's a lot of the you're jumping and they're falling. But on the ones that fall, there's the little like piranha plant looking things that shoot fire at you. So you have to jump and land on it kill it, and then jump off really fast. Oh, okay. Very stressful. I will say, though, some of the platforming is very unique, and I don't think I've ever seen it before in a game. The two I can think of is when there's that waterfall, and you're at the top of the waterfall, and then the logs are coming over the top, and you have to jump on the logs as you see them cresting over the top of the waterfall to make it to where you need to be, which I thought was really neat. Yeah, I mean, what I think you're about to say is the other one that stood out to me, and it's where the boulders are falling. Yes, that was the next one. <laughs> I thought that one was really cool. And it's it's not that hard to figure out, but it just looks cool. And it looks like, like if you watch someone do it, it looks like, like, what the fuck is this? Like, how are you doing this? You know what I mean? Yeah. I was standing there like, I don't know how to make it across this lake. And then as I'm watching it, I'm like, I'm pretty sure they want me to jump on these boulders. But I that can't be right because they keep jumping back and forth. And... The fact that you could, it looked so awesome. It was fun. It, it was unique. It wasn't just a straight line like everything else. Yeah, dude. I just, I love this game. It's so fun. And like, <laughs> I I was, so I played it on Tuesday and I just could not wait to play it again. And I played it the next day. If I wasn't busy the rest of the week, I would have kept playing it, honestly. <laughs> just to try to beat that last level. Well, I got to the last level today, but I I honestly would just play it again. I really like it. It's just fun. It's like satisfying. It's I I have nothing bad to say about it really. I did have a little bit of negativity. To, like I feel like everything about this is very fun, cool ideas that we really don't see that often. Some of it I don't think is executed as well as it could have been executed. Specifically like jumping off of ropes is very uh iffy. <laughs> you don't know if you're always going to make it. Yeah, especially like one you get onto the ones that are moving. It's like you have to go all the way to the bottom to get the most jump length, which like makes sense, but it doesn't feel right when you're doing it. It doesn't at all. And that was, you read my mind. That's exactly where I was going with that. Because those zip lines, I've died so many times trying to get the right jump. And even when you think you got the timing, it's not right and you die somehow. Or you don't make it to the one item you need or the heart or extra life or sword. There is... I want to say on the beginning of level eight or end of level seven, I forget, there is a gauntlet of the swinging rope. And it is so hard. Oh, yeah. You're talking about swinging. Yeah, I was talking about zip lines. But yeah, the swinging ropes too. Oh, I was talking about the swinging ropes the whole time. But the zip lines, yeah, I agree with you too. I forgot that there were swinging ropes in this game. I, My brain was just fixated on those zip lines. But even the rope that don't move, it still doesn't feel right when you're jumping sometimes. It doesn't. 
it's like almost there, but not really. Which there's when you you're first introduced to the swinging ropes, it made me realize there's a lot of levels where it's just a lot of blind jumps where you don't really know what's coming up. You're just jumping and hoping for the best. I don't love that usually, but I didn't really find it to be too much of an issue in this game. I feel like when that happens, it really doesn't punish you too often. No, no. It's it's rare that it actually punishes you. And they do the nice thing of a fruit or fruits or whatever pop up for you to collect. And it kind of sometimes leads you in the path of where you need to go, which is nice. A nice little touch. Another downside I find is that I don't like how they just randomly pop up and go away after a certain amount of time. I can see why you don't like it, but it's kind of just like, you know, if you're quick, you can get them and get those extra points. But if not, then that sucks. I agree. But when there's like a heart and you really want that heart, I found that there's a lot of times where the timing doesn't work out of you're waiting for a platform to come to you so you can jump on it. And by the time the platform even comes, the items disappear. So you don't even get an opportunity to get the items. That's true. It's like it wasn't timed properly. Yeah. And I don't know if there's a way to like, it could be that if you just play this enough, you know, oh, I got to wait this many seconds for the platform to be here and then I can run, get to the platform and get the items at the same time. Even if that's the case, you still shouldn't have to do that. No. Like, I'd be fine with them just appearing out of nowhere. It's a unique idea. Just don't disappear. If they pop up, you, they should be there until you get them, I feel like. Uh, and then the last thing I thought was a negative, and this is like the only three negatives, was sometimes when you have to quickly turn around to get a hidden, uh, you can't because the boss is like, specifically the vampire kid, he moves so fast that you need to be ready for the attack and you can't move out of the way and then attack is one or the other. Yeah, but that to me feels kind of deliberate. Like it's like you have to choose the best time to get your attacks in, you know? It's kind of the same thing as like a like souls, you know? It's like you have to be patient and get the attacks in when you can and then you have to just keep dodging and dodging and dodging, you know? But I do like how they don't have these gimmicky things like a wall jump or double jump. You literally just have a jump. So my biggest negative to this game is just the final level. It's just, it's too too far. They went too far. <laughs> I can't wait to see this final level. Dude, I... The part that broke me, I think, was they introduce really fast slamming things and you have to like jump through them really quick. So it's like psh, 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 over and over again. And you can't just jump nicely through them because there's spikes underneath. So you have to like time it down to like the fucking millisecond to get it perfectly. And I did it over and over again. So it's almost like, hey, you did all this stuff throughout the entire game. Now let's put that to the test on this last level. Yes and no, because the fi whole final thing is like all platforming and all timed jumps. And sure, there's a few tough enemies, but it's really just all about the platforming. And I just felt that it was a little too mean-spirited and just overly difficult. They didn't have to go that hard. Yeah, like if you would say the rest of the game is like an eight for difficulty, as an example, this is like a 20. It is just like so hard. And like, I was just trying my best try and beat it before we started this episode. But I just, you know, you have to draw the line somewhere. You know, every man has his limits. <laughs> I just couldn't do it anymore. Uh, we talked about some power-ups with the swords and stuff. What did the blue sword icon do? I have no idea what half these things did, dude. Just because like you'd get them, then you'd die, and then I wouldn't remember anymore. Yeah, it's like you get the orange sword, which is the fire, and then there's a blue one. And every time I got the blue, it made us sound like, oh, yeah, you did a good thing by getting this. But it didn't change any play style that I could tell. Did it just make your sword more powerful or no? It could be a behind the scenes thing. Maybe. Maybe like certain enemies that took three hits take two or something like that. You know what I mean? I Yeah, I guess I never figured that out. And as you said, I kept dying a lot. So I never got to hold on to whatever I had anyways. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt about it. It's like, I'm going to lose this in the next few minutes anyway. So I don't even care. But yeah, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. We kind of went through this whole game. The last two things I had was I just wish they had more upgrades for your sword. The fire one, awesome. I would like to see more. That's all. Yeah, I'm surprised there wasn't like a lightning one or like an ice one or something. You know what I mean? Especially since in the fighting system and your girlfriend, we didn't bring those. She can do lightning attacks too. So I expected some type of lightning attack. Um, and the last thing is I realized as I was typing my notes after a continue went through, if you leave the screen sit long enough, it shows you a tutorial level. So I saw it one time and I accidentally got out of it and then I tried to get it to happen again, 
but then it just started showing the first level again. There's a lot of random clips it can show you. So I think you just have to wait and wait for that to pop up. I kind of wish there was a built-in option to uh, see the tutorial or something, but or have a tutorial level before you play the game. But Yeah, the tutorial level should have just been at the menu. I mean, is it helpful as far as like for us who can't read it or no? No, I will say it's pretty much everything we could figure out on our own. Like everything we figured out naturally while playing, you could figure out. Or that's what the tor- tutorial shows you. There's also a versus mode, which is just like the Street Fighter fighting mode, right? Oh, I saw that, but I didn't click on it, so I didn't know what it was. I'm pretty sure it's just like a, a you fight your friend in the fighting mode. And you get that after you beat easy mode, then the, that unlocks. Which is a nice little bonus of, oh, you beat the game? Now here's a new mode. Yeah, I mean, while it's not like in-depth, really, it would still be fun to like mess around with for a few minutes at least. All right, well, uh, I could not find any reviews for this. I tried. I went everywhere. The only reviews I could find were from when the game came out in 2009 on the Japanese PSN, like the PS3 releases. So I don't really count that because that doesn't really help. Because like the spirit of this is like, well, how was the game received at the time, right? So I'm just kind of looking. I was looking at Wikipedia. You know, I figured I could kind of just read a little bit here. And, you know, Famitsu, which is the Japanese game magazine, Gave it 26 out of 40. That doesn't seem too good. Yeah, I know, right? Well, the way theirs works is there's four reviewers and they each give it a score out of 10. And then that is that added up. Okay, so that means they got really bad reviews from a lot of them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, basically they just said it was difficult and that it was really only suitable for people who enjoyed like the older kind of NES Famicom style games. Which I... I think that's what the target audience is and that's what we love about it. Yeah. And, you know, this came out during a time where everybody was focused on 3D. So, like, for a game that looks like this to come out and be this good really wasn't that common. It's just a weird thing to put it, like, rank it so low and, like, that's your excuse to why? Well, that's what's interesting, right? So, like, these reviews on Wikipedia, which I'm assuming are for the time, I don't know that, but we have a 26 out of 40, a B minus, a 75 out of 100, and a 14 out of 20. Well, then you get into the reviews from like when the game came out again in 2009, and we have 95%, 90%, 80%, 80%. So, you know, when going back to this game, people seem to like it like we did. But at the time, people were kind of just over it, I think. That's a very fair point. It could just be also, uh, they looked at this game as, oh, you're not trying to push the envelope you're just playing it safe with doing this old style that we've seen before. Look at all these other games that are doing 3D, even though oh, I, I get what they're saying. And then when 2009, uh, it's just a new fresh eyes on it. And then it's like, oh, this is actually really good. I think we could just jump right into our scores and ranking here. No secret, I really like this game. The only real downsides are kind of what we said already. Like, I think that the fighting stuff could have been a little better. I think the more you do it, the less special it feels. And I think they should have introduced another interesting boss mechanic for maybe the last two bosses or something. Well, it sounds like it was with the dragon. Well, it was kind of just a normal boss. Like the way that you do it, it's just like you were still in the normal, like little Ralph fighting this boss. What I'm saying is, is like the fighting game stuff was very just off the wall. They could have had another thing like that. You know what I mean? But regardless, I really liked it. The fighting game stuff, we know we both don't love fighting games, but this was pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And that's just kind of how I feel about this whole game. It's like, it's just a really well-made game. It's straightforward, but not in a bad way. And I think I'm going to give this game a nine. Honestly, whenever I was playing it, and from all the things you told me prior to me playing it, I expected you to go about a nine. I was was even going to go 9.5, but I'm like, well, there are, to me, like, there are still some things that could be improved. Yes. It's not perfect by any means. No, not at all. And I agree with you on all those points you just made. I found that whenever I was playing this, I was getting very, very frustrated. But I found that I was just getting frustrated because I was trying to rush it because now I wanted to just get through the level. So it was, it was always on me. Or if they did throw a new enemy at me and I died, yeah, it's a bullshit thing. But then now I learned whenever I come back to that enemy that this is what this guy does. So after all that, I honestly think that this sits as a very high eight. 
for me. Fair enough. Fair enough. It was fun. I do think they could have improved it a bit more. And like you said, whenever you went to normal, you found yourself getting through the first five levels really easily. I was doing the same thing of there were parts where I went back and played uh, the first level over and over again because I kept dying and just restarting to get back and go through it. And each pass through, I was getting faster and faster at it because I was learning what I was supposed to be doing. Exactly. I just think this is just a well-made game and it, you know, it controls great and it just it just feels good to play. Even when it's hard, it's still fun to play. Yeah. I do feel like I'm going to go back and I want to keep playing just to see if I can progress more and maybe even see this final level, which I think I can because of the unlimited continues and all that stuff. It's not impossible like Einhander was. No, I I don't think that even if you're bad at these kind of games, you could still work your way through this with the continues because the game wants you to keep trying. It wants you to keep playing it. Whereas Einhander is like, fuck you, get good, loser. Yeah, and when you get your continue, it, or when you're out of continues, back to the beginning. You got to do it all over again. <laughs> That's another thing too, you know. I I felt like I had to play Einhander with save states because I just there was just no way. There was no way in fucking hell I was going to beat it. But with this game, I only used them at the very end because I just wanted to finish it, but I didn't need to. And I have full confidence that if I wanted to beat this game without it, I could have done it. I'm now expecting for one of these episodes where you just free to bring up the fact that you beat the game finally. It's true. <laughs> I don't I don't think I will though. Oh, okay. But everything about this was just smooth. There is no lag, there's no loading screens. Well, technically, there's loading screens, but they masked it between him running between the levels. But that's it. I mean, it, just like Tekken, is all straightforward, loaded fast, and you never really had to wait on anything. And you just went and kept going. It's very sad that this didn't, you know, do well, and it didn't get, you know, if it would have came out in the U.S., I don't know if it would have made a difference. But like, man, if this game had some sequels, I think they would have been like ten out of ten. Yeah, especially improving on just the little things that we complained about. You could easily make this a 10 game. I mean, I just feel like a few small tweaks, a few small changes, and you would have had a perfect game. But, uh, yep, I agree. So, this ranking, this is now number one. Yep. Now we got our, we broke free of the seven wall, and we are now in the eights with this game. 8.5, the average. Best game so far. Completely agree. And, you know, it's funny. Last week I was saying, like, I haven't played a game for the show yet where I wanted to actively go back to it. And here we are. You know, I finally felt that. <laughs> I finally felt the urge to play all week and I had to reward the game for it. Yeah. And I mean, even at 8.5, that means we still have so much more we can go to. So I'm excited to see even higher than this. I agree. There's going to be some game eventually where we're both just in complete agreement that this is amazing and we're going to both give it something high and then that's going to be the game to beat. <laughs> Exactly. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for watching or listening. If you enjoyed this, please remember to like and subscribe as well as give us a rating on podcast services. We will see you next week.